is our child's soul. When it first incarnates, you could think of it as a blank slate. Or you, maybe a better illustration is think of it as a sponge. So it's just this sponge in a pristine state, just like a sponge you'd go to the supermarket and get off the shelf. You know what they like? Totally clean, no mud in them or anything like that. Just a sponge ready to be used, right? Totally clean. That's what your child is at the time of conception. Now, from that moment on, just like a sponge, it soaks up everything from its environment. So, the child, remember, before it came, still has personality. Does that make sense? So, God created each of us with individual personalities. But what's happening is we've got our environment feeding us, particularly, emotions. So, things are coming from outside of the child, entering the child through its emotional state, basically. And this is happening right at the moment of conception onwards, not from birth, from conception. So imagine for a moment if the mother, right at the moment of, you know, a few days after conception, she realises she's pregnant, and it's her, it's her ninth child, and she's had a terrible time with eight children before that, she feels, how much is she going to feel like she wants to have this child? Not very much, eh? And if she has a husband who's away all the time, working for the other eight children and herself, and, uh, and not having much quality of life, she'll probably feel even less inclined to, to feel joyous about her pregnancy, right? Now, that emotion is straight away being soaked up by the child, right in that condition. Does that make sense? So the emotion that you feel of even about your pregnancies, and this is, applies to the male as well as the female. So let's say, let's say the woman gets pregnant in a relationship and the man in the relationship has a real hard time with the fact that she's pregnant. So let's say she, he feels like he, you know, he doesn't want her to be pregnant, he would prefer to have an abortion than be pregnant. Now that emotion is coming from the man to the child. Does that make sense to everyone? Right from the moment that child is incarnated. Now you imagine just that one emotion and what damage it's going to do for the rest of its life. Quite a lot, eh? Because it felt not wanted from the, from the moment it could feel. And the problem with accessing those emotions is pretty hard too for the child. Because these emotions are emotions that it doesn't have an intellect about. So it doesn't have a memory of an experience that caused it to feel the way it feels. It just, as a part of itself, feels that way right from the time it was even born and even before then. So that's a pretty damaging thing. So if you can think of these emotions that it's getting from an environment as a sponge, this soul as a sponge, and the emotions are getting passed into the soul, and the personality of the soul will determine how the child responds to the emotion. Does that make sense? Think of it as a pristine soul, just like a sponge soaking in everything from its environment. Can you say something? No? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just probably the, the points that um, maybe not as clear that the, the soul doesn't have any defense at all from what's coming, coming at it from all of these different um, parties and from the environment. And the point of incarnation is for us to realise our, our own selves, our own individualisation. So in a sense, the child is there saying, who am I, what's going on? And everything, all of these emotions are the way that it starts to learn about itself and its own individual self. So it doesn't really have a defence. In a way, you're telling it everything about itself. And can you see why it doesn't have a defense because basically everything that's going to come to it from its environment is going to come through you and the person that it has the least defense of is you your parents All right? now your defenses of the environment do affect the child so if you have different areas where you prevent the child from being harmed here then that's going to be great for the child obviously but here remember we're talking about everything emotionally so it's a, the really part of the goal is to help the child in, in terms of protection, is to protect the child from emotional damage from its environment. Now, the time they spend the most 
the person they spend the most time with is us, the parents. And so that's where they're going to get the majority of their emotional damage. So if I haven't worked on my emotions and cleared through my emotions as a parent, the child will get the emotional damage. 